Hey there, everybody. It is so good to see you again. My name is Jonathan, and I'm joined today by a very special friend. Do you remember this guy from Pastor Ken's teaching last week? Well, I know. This is Noah himself. Noah from Noah and the Ark, and he's joining me this morning. Look how happy he is. He's just taking out his arms to, to give a big old hug. And you know, we talked about Noah last week in our Old Testament character study series that we've been doing online for all you nice boys and girls at home. And so Pastor Ken was with you guys last week, and now Pastor Ken was talking to you all about Noah, our friend Noah right here. This is going to my office. I really love this. This is going to be worth a lot of money one day, all right? It's a Pastor Ken original, okay? It's pretty sweet. Anyways, he was talking about Noah. Now, Noah lived many, 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 many years ago. He lived so long ago, it was an entirely different earth back then. So different that Noah and his family were actually the only people on the earth who were following God. How crazy is that? You know, today some of us might complain about there not being enough believers in the world, but back in Noah's day, it was him, his wife, his three sons, and their wives. Just eight righteous people living on the face of the earth at the time. So the earth was in bad shape. Everybody's being really mean. They're all pushing each other around. It's not a good time, right? It's like bullies on the playground galore. It's super bad. So things are not looking good. Things are looking really, really messy. And so God just decides that he's going to hit the reset button because look, he knows the future. He knows all of our decisions. And God knew that all the people on the planet were not going to turn to him except for Noah and his family. So God calls Noah up, right? He says, hey, Noah, you like water? Noah says, I drink lots of it. And God's like, well, we're going to flood the whole darn earth with it. And Noah's like, okay, should I maybe have something to, you know, prevent myself from drowning? And God's like, yes, I want you to build a giant boat bigger than a football stadium. Really crazy thing. But God promised that if Noah built this giant boat, this ark, eh? if he built this giant ark, then he and his entire family would be perfectly safe from the impending flood. So Noah does it, and you got to imagine, this guy Noah probably looked super crazy weird. You know, it was this crazy old man building up a giant... See, see we, we like to think that the ark looked like, you know, a kind of boat we'd see today. But honestly, if we look at the description that God gives to Noah of the ark in Genesis, it's a giant wooden box. So you just got old man Noah in his front yard building a giant wooden box. He probably got laughed at all the time. But even though it looked weird, even though nobody else was doing it, Noah stayed faithful to God. Eventually, he built the ark. The flood comes. We know the rest of the story. Noah gets two of every single animal. He gets them on the ark. He gets his sons, their wives, and his wife on the ark. And so they stay on the ark for quite a bit. And eventually, a dove comes back, brings uh, Noah evidence that the flood waters have receded. It means they've gone away. And so Noah and his family land the ark safely, and they start up humanity. Generation 2. And in this time, this time, the sequel was better than the original. And so that's where we last left off in our Old Testament character study series. We talked about being loyal to God even if nobody else is being loyal to him around us. And the example of Noah and his faith and his devotion to God is something truly amazing that we can all learn from. It's a story that stands the test of time and one that, you know, it doesn't matter how young or old you are, it's a very good story that we can all learn from. So I, I really hope you guys enjoyed hearing Pastor Ken talk about Noah, but today we're going to transition to a, a new story about a new biblical character, a man that many consider to be the father of many different faiths in the world, a character who is very foundational, very important to what we talk about in the Bible. Today, we're going to be talking about a man called Abraham, or should I say Abram? More on that later. But before we jump into it, why don't we pause and pray together? Would you please bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, I thank you so much for the ability to, to still learn and be a church over the internet. We thank you for that, God. We pray for, for good health and safety for all my brothers and sisters back at home, God, that you would bring us all together real soon, Lord, all in your timing. But right now, God, show us something new, something awesome, or a great reminder, Lord, from the story of Abraham. I'm so thankful, God, that I get to still teach and, and, and give out these lessons, Lord, all for your glory. 
God, and I pray that you would really just give us a great time through this lesson today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, before we actually jump into the story of Abraham, I want to tell you about a man known as Terah. A man known as Terah. And not a lot of people talk about Terah. So, if you could get your Bibles out, please, and open up to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 11. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. Genesis chapter 11, verse 27. And I'm going to read to verse 32. So why don't you read along with me? This is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father Terah was still living. Meanwhile, Abram, excuse me, meanwhile, Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah. But Sarai was unable to become pregnant and had no children. One day, Terah took his son, Abram, his daughter-in-law, Sarah, his son, Abram's wife, and then his grandson, Lot, his son, Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. Okay, so Terah is Noah's great, 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 great grandson. So you could tell that Terah was a pretty great guy. You're not here right now, but I can tell that you didn't think that joke was all that funny. And I understand. I'm just going to keep moving now. So Terah is the father of Abram. Now, Terah was a wealthy guy. He was successful. He has three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran passes away, sadly, but he's survived by his son Lot. And so Terah one day decides that he wants to move out of his homeland, a place called Ur of the Chaldeans, okay? Ur of the Chaldeans. You know, it kind of like sounds like an angry dog. Ur, 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 Ur of the Chaldeans. They're moving out of Ur of the Chaldeans. And, and so they go and settle towards the land of Canaan. But they stop before they get to Canaan, and they stop in a land which uh, Terah names after his son, Haran. So they stop in a land called Haran, and there in Haran, Terah passes away. So Terah passes away, and the story now shifts from following wealthy Terah to following his son, Abram. And now the stage is set, because there are some really important things about Terah. His wealth, his honor, his background that is kind of passed on to Abram, which makes what's about to happen here for Abram very, very important. So, let's continue reading in our Bibles here in Genesis chapter 12. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 12 now. We're going to start up in verse 1, and we're going to see what happens to Abram to make him such a noteworthy person. Okay, Genesis 12 verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot was with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken to his household at Haran, and headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram, Abram traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up camp beside the oak of Morah. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and Ai to the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages toward the Najib. Lots of traveling, lots of walking, but here's, here's something crazy that happens. Why does Abraham travel so much? Why does Abram go so far? What's going on here? Well, we hear here in Genesis 12, the very first verse, that Abram gets a direct call from God. 
And God tells Abram that he's going to make his entire family into a great, mighty nation. All Abram's got to do is he's got to leave behind everything he's ever known. He's got to leave behind everything and go into this foreign land he's never been to before, a land he's unfamiliar with. And, and so, so all of a sudden he just decides to do this. He just does it. And that's a crazy thing. It's a weird thing. And let me tell you why it's such a weird and crazy thing. Here's the deal. Abram had lots of money. Abram was very comfortable where he was. He didn't seem like he was annoyed or mad. He kind of inherited a lot of the stuff his dad already had. And the Bible tells us that Abram worshipped a false god before he met the one true god. So this random God just shows up to Abram, and he's like, Yo, Abram, I'm going to give you lots of grandchildren if you just head on out to this random land in the east. That's kind of a weird thing. Why would Abram just be like, Okay, random guy I just met. Like, okay, let's, let me paint a picture for you. Here's the deal. You're at home. You like home. It's comfy. You got your video games. You got your junk food, okay? You got all you ever need. You don't, have to, you don't even have to go to school right now, okay? You guys are living it up at the moment. Now imagine, some random guy knocks on your door, looks at you and says, Hey, how would you feel about going out east to a land you've never been to before? All you have to do is leave everything familiar behind and never come back for it ever again. What do you say? I would probably say, uh, no, weird man, go away. I'm fine here, all comfortable at my house. So why does Abram leave everything behind? Well, I think it goes back to that promise. That promise God gave Abram that he would turn Abram's family into a mighty nation meaning Abram would have descendants. Now, if you remember, we read back in chapter 11 that Abram's wife, Sarai, she couldn't have children. And Abram was an old man. He probably thought he was never going to have a son. And, and back in those days, having a kid was a big deal. And Abram and Sarai couldn't have any kids. He was probably so sad about that. And so all of a sudden, Here's this promise that you're not only going to have a kid, you're going to have an entire nation of descendants. Abram heard God's promise, and he had faith in God's promise. And Abram's faith is what moved him to leave everything behind and to head out to the land of, of Canaan, even though it was totally unfamiliar. Abram had to walk by faith. Well, was Abram's faith rewarded? Did he end up getting what God said he would get? Well, if you want to know the answer to that, you're just going to have to watch next week's video, aren't we? Yeah. I really miss whenever I would say that, and I would hear all you guys in the audience go, Oh, Jonathan, come on. It's really not the same effect. I'm just going to pretend like you're all groaning at home, and then that's just going to make me feel a whole lot better. So, oh, just come back next week. We'll, we'll learn more. Don't worry about it. So before we close out, I want to talk about something with you guys. I want to, I want to look at Abram for a minute. Abram had some truly remarkable faith in this story. Really, some awesome faith. And Hebrews 11 verse 1 says that faith is hope in things we can't see, but things we know are true. Hebrews 11 is a great chapter on faith. I really recommend you guys read it if you get the chance. And well, see, this was so true for old Abram. Abram couldn't see this mighty nation. Abram couldn't even see himself ever having a child. But he had faith. And he made a big leap, a big jump of faith for God. So why have I been calling Abraham Abram this whole time? Well, Abram was Abraham's birth name, and the name means exalted father. Well, eventually, God changes Abram's name to Abraham, which means the father of many, as a reminder of Abraham's faith and the promise that God made to Abraham. Faith is so important, guys. Faith is so huge. As believers and followers of Jesus, we actually need faith. You can't follow Jesus without faith. I don't know about you guys, but I've never physically seen God. I've never heard God as clearly as, as Abraham did here. You know, I got my phone right here. I never got a, a message all of a sudden that just says, ring, 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 ring. Oh, hello, it is me, God. Hello, Jonathan. I've never gotten that. But I have faith 
because I've seen what God has done, I felt peace from God, and I know his word to be true from my own experiences. In the same way, guys, we might not see God, we might not hear God, but we have faith in God because we have felt God and experienced him. We need faith because sometimes God's going to tell us to do things or put things in our life that are going to be difficult. He's going to make us promises that might not be, always be easy to, to believe. So we need to have faith because God is so good and God knows everything and God's got an awesome plan. But as, as people, we can forget that. But if we go forward in faith and seek faith like Abraham did and make these leaps of faith because we know God is true and God is good, and then God will honor us for that. But we can't get through our life as believers without having some faith in God. If Abraham never had faith in God, the entire Jewish nation, Israel, would never have happened and Jesus would have never been born. Faith is so huge and it's a wonderful gift because I don't know about you guys, but my faith in Jesus brings so much peace to me and it takes so much pressure off my shoulders. Faith is important, guys. And if you ever struggle with faith and you feel like you don't have enough, all you got to do is just ask God to increase your faith. Pray to him, ask him to make your faith uh, deeper and larger, and he'll do it. Have faith, guys. Have faith like Abraham did. He's a great example of trusting in God despite what's going on around us. In the midst of this coronavirus time where we're all locked inside, faith is huge because God's going to take this thing and push it away. It'll be a thing of the past. And that's very hard to see right now, especially with church being shut down and schools closed and buildings closed and all that. Man, you can't even walk into McDonald's anymore. You have to order it on your phone or go through the drive through In this world of shut down McDonald's everywhere, faith is going to be really important because God's going to come through. So I want to ask you guys, do you, do you have that faith that Jesus is going to come through and, 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 and fix this and help you guys? Pray to him. Ask him to increase your faith if you need it. And if you already got a strong faith, that's awesome. Keep working at it. Always look back to Abraham. He's a great example of faith. We can never have too much of it in the Lord. Okay? Awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm going to pray, and then I'll close this out. So let's pray real quick. Dear God, thank you so much for the story of Abraham, Lord. This great story of a great man of faith. And I pray for my brothers and sisters back at home, Lord. Help their faith, God. Keep them strong and steadfast in you, Lord. Give them a great foundation of faith in the midst of all this craziness. We thank you, Lord, for being so good that even if we can't see you physically, God, we know you're there because we have felt you and experienced you through faith. You're awesome, God. We appreciate you and we love you so deeply and dearly. Bring us all together soon, God. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Uh, hey, Noah, say, say goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my friends. I'll see you again next week. Very good. Bye.